Welcome to lecture 9 of uh, basic electrical circuits. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, mesh analysis. It's a, an analysis method where you start with uh, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law around different meshes in the circuit. It's a subcase of this uh, loop analysis. So now we see that uh, it's an alternative to nodal analysis. And as uh, at the very end of the lecture, uh, we were trying to figure out which one would be used, nodal analysis or mesh analysis. Okay. So before we get there, if there are any questions about any of the previous lectures, please ask so we can uh, discuss those things. Any questions about the previous lecture? Okay, uh, in that case let us go ahead with the lecture. At the end of the previous lecture I asked whether we would use nodal analysis or mesh analysis. I mean I say mesh analysis so in general a loop analysis. And the way to decide is that nodal analysis has n minus 1 KCL equations and loop analysis will have B minus n plus 1 KBL equations which you have to solve uh, for a circuit with n nodes and B branches. Okay. So, what we have to decide is, is n minus 1 a larger number or b minus n plus 1 a larger number, okay. So, to this, uh, to answer this, uh, I asked you, first of all, the number of branches uh, depends very much on the circuit, but what is the maximum number of branches you can have? n node circuit if there are branches between every node and every other node that is if there are branches connecting all nodes to all other nodes How many branches will be there? Okay, please try to answer this question. How many branches will be there?
Okay, uh, there were a couple of answers saying 2n minus 1 and the other one was n times n minus 1 by 2 and that's the correct answer. The correct answer is that it will be n choose 2 or uh, n times n minus 1 by 2. Okay, so every branch can be connected to n minus 1 other branches. That's why you get this n minus 1 here and then you have n possibilities uh, for uh, selecting the starting node. And also you get divided by 2 because if node A is connected to node B, it's the same as connecting node B to node A. Okay. Alternatively, you can think of uh, while adding branches, you have to pick two nodes. You have n possible nodes and out of that you pick uh, two nodes and you can do that in n choose two ways. Okay. n times n minus 1 by 2. So this uh, I will simply approximate it by n square by 2 for large n. Okay. So this n minus 1 is approximated by n. So if every branch is connected to, sorry, every node is connected to every other node by branches, this number b minus n plus 1 will be of the order of n square by 2, okay, for large n. And the number of KVL equations will be a lot more than the number of KCL equations, okay. Now in reality, uh, it will be somewhere in the middle. It's uh, possible that you have a... Uh, you have very few branches that is you just have a single loop okay for instance you can have n nodes and branches only like that in this case clearly number of kvl equations will be smaller alternatively you can have everything connected to everything else okay something like this Right. In this case, you have a uh, lot more, uh, lot more KVL equations than KCL equations. Now, the reality will be somewhere in between. It's not that all the nodes will be arranged in a single loop, or it's not that every node will be connected to every other node using a branch. So, the number of uh, KVL equations will be smaller than this, but in general, it tends to be a little more than the number of KCL equations. Okay, so that is one reason. Although this is not a hard and fast rule and it's possible to have a single KVL equation for an N node circuit if you happen to have a single loop. In that case, you choose KVL. Now, it turns out that this uh, analysis of circuits using a computer that uses nodal analysis. There is another reason for it. Okay, that is that it's very easy to identify nodes. They are just given to you. And this is true even for human beings. You look at a circuit, you know what the nodes are. But a little harder to identify all the loops. Okay. So you have to first identify a tree, then start adding links to the tree to form loops. Okay. So because of these reasons, usually, uh, if you want to do systematic analysis of large circuits, you end up using nodal analysis. Okay. Okay. Is the audio okay? Okay, it seems fine for uh, some people, but maybe uh, for those of you for whom the audio is not good, 
you have to check the setup at your end okay so this is just to say that you end up using uh, nodal analysis for uh, systematic analysis of large circuits okay so so far what we have done is to look at uh, nodal analysis and mesh analysis we can systematically write down equations for the two cases if you have only current sources and resistors nodal analysis uh, comes out with a nice stru nice structure similarly the if you have only voltage sources and resistors mesh analysis equations have a nice structure but either of these can be used even when you have uh, other sources that is you can use nodal analysis when you have voltage sources and mesh analysis when you have current sources in case of nodal analysis with voltage sources you either define an auxiliary variable or use super node similarly in case of mesh analysis with current sources you use an auxiliary variable for the voltage across the current source or use a super mesh and when you have control sources things tend to become more complicated but uh, you should be able to figure out those things as well and if you are trying to solve some specific problem but uh, run into some trouble then uh, please raise it in the class and we'll discuss that okay so any questions on uh, either nodal analysis or mesh analysis Any questions? Okay, then uh, let's move on to the next topic in our course, which is uh, certain theorems involving circuits. What I showed so far was uh, ways of uh, systematically analyzing uh, large circuits okay so that's how you use nodal and mesh analysis now when you are doing hand analysis of small circuits you tend to use a number of ad hoc ways in fact i will discuss many of those things after i discuss the circuit theorems okay So we will start with some uh, very simple things first, okay. First of all, uh, these are not called circuit theorems, but uh, some transformations that you can use and we have already discussed these, but I will briefly touch upon them. If you have a voltage source in parallel with anything, it is the same as the voltage source okay this is just to remind you of uh, some basic results Okay, so if this is V0, this will also be V0 and similarly, if you have a current source in series with anything, it is equivalent to a current source. Okay, I assume that there will be no questions about this. These are really basic results. Uh, clearly, uh, whatever element you have in series, the current coming out here will be I0. So, current source in series with anything will be just a current source. Similarly, whatever this B, across this you have a voltage V0. So, whether you analyze the, well, when I say equivalent, what it means is, if you analyze the circuit with this, or without this you will get exactly the same result the only difference will be that this may draw some extra current from the voltage source okay so except for the current in the voltage source having this or not having this there will be no difference 
similarly here except for the voltage across the current source having this or not having this will not make any difference at all okay Now let's move on to uh, slightly more sophisticated things. Now let's say we have a node with a number of branches and this is the node. Okay, and this is branch number one, two, three, and four. Okay, so this is just an illustration, and let me assume that in my particular circuit, in uh, series with uh, these three branches, there happen to be voltage sources. Okay, and all of the same value V naught. Okay, so all I am saying is there is a node and in my example I have taken four branches and in three of those branches there is a voltage source with the same consistent polarity and the same value V naught. Okay, let us say this is the circuit, this is just the assumption. Now in general you can have uh, N nodes with uh, N minus 1 uh, uh, branches sorry you can have one node with uh, n branches and n minus one of those n branches will have the same value voltage source okay so this is the circuit so now what i'd like answers from you is let me call these nodes n1 uh, n2 and n3 okay what will be the how will be the voltages at n1 n2 and n3 be related to each other my question is there will be some voltage at n1 with respect to the reference node of the circuit and n2 and n3 okay so how are these going to be related to each other please try to answer this So the question is how are the voltages at N1, N2 and N3 related to each other? So a couple of you have given your answers, they will be the same voltage and that is pretty clear because let us assume that the voltage here is some V1. Now the voltage at N1 will be V1 plus this V0 and here it will be V1 plus V0 again and here also it is V1 plus V0. Okay, So they will all be equal to each other. Now, uh, it turns out that if uh, two nodes in a circuit have the same voltage, you can connect them without changing the circuit. Okay, So, if you have two nodes and you know that the voltages are identical, okay? if this is V1, this is also V1, then you can short these two without affecting the circuit. 
okay now this uh, can be used done in most cases but there are some cases where it cannot be done i will not go into them now but in most uh, general uh, most regular circuits you can do this okay so what does this mean because the voltage here there and there are the same i can connect all of them together okay and in fact if i had more branches with voltage sources like this i could connect all of them together okay so now if i observe this circuit i see that this voltage source and that voltage source and that voltage source are in parallel with each other okay so these three voltage sources are in parallel with each other now if you have uh, uh, voltage sources of equal value in parallel with each other first of all if they are of one equal value you cannot even connect them in parallel but if they are of equal value and parallel with each other it's the same as having a single voltage source okay so this is the same as doing this with a single voltage source v not and this branch number 1 2 3 and 4 okay and this node represents the union of the three nodes basically whatever i have shorted and you have a single voltage source okay so what this whole exercise is showing is that if you have a picture like this with voltage source on one of the branches it is exactly the same as having a picture like this with this voltage source moved to all the other branches okay any questions about this okay so now this theorem is sometimes useful to prove other theorems we may not use it directly in this course but uh, this is known as pushing the voltage source through a node now i proved it by starting with these multiple voltage sources and combining them into this one but it's usually more useful to go the other way around if you have a voltage source in a single branch you can push it into all the other branches connected to that node okay so typically you end up going in uh, this direction and this is uh, you can call this as pushing a voltage source through a node okay so this is about uh, voltage sources and similarly for current sources there is uh, something okay now let's say you have a current source i not in a circuit okay and it's exactly the same as having Uh, two current sources in series of identical value okay so this by definition is exactly equal to that one okay now if you we have formed a new node in the middle and if you take a wire from that node what will be the current flowing here what is that current going to be whatever be the value of y not any current source you take it split it into two sources in series and form a node in the middle and if you connect a wire to that middle node what will be the current flowing through that wire
yeah it's pretty clear that this ix will be zero okay so now uh, this is useful in the following way because the current here is identically going to be zero you can take this node and connect it to any other node in the circuit okay okay now this is sometimes useful so if you have a current source connected between let's say some nodes n1 and n2 you can split that into two current sources and you can connect the middle to anywhere and usually you it's convenient to connect it to the reference node okay so instead of a single current source between n1 and n2 you will have a current source from n1 to the reference node and from the reference node to n2 and sometimes this is easier to analyze again uh, if we i will point out if there are examples that uh, make use of this but uh, this is some general property that you can use to simplify circuits and visualize certain things about circuits okay any questions about this Okay, so these are quite simple, so we can move forwards. Now the next thing is a little more interesting. Let's say I have any circuit N. Okay. Any circuit or network N. And there is some element connected to it. I will take a resistor as an example, but this can be any element okay and it doesn't even have to be linear so let's say i have a resistance r and this has all kinds of things in it it can have resistors current sources and voltage sources and so on okay now uh, the question is okay can i take this circuit remove the resistor and put something else here okay some box such that all the voltages and currents in this circuit are exactly the same as voltages and currents in this circuit okay let me assume that in the original circuit there is a certain voltage across the uh, resistor and there is current through the resistor okay so under these uh, conditions can I replace the resistor with something else so that all the uh, the solution to the circuit that is all the branch voltages and branch currents in this circuit will be exactly the same as the ones in this circuit. Is that possible? If so, what will I replace it with? Please try to answer this. So can I replace the resistor with something else without changing any of the branch voltages or branch currents in the circuit N?
So please try to answer this. I am not getting any responses. So because of the setup here, I will not be able to hear your questions over audio. So somebody has raised their hand, but please use the chat window to ask your question. Okay, I've got only one response, which says that this could be replaced by a voltage controlled current source. Now I'm not sure what is uh, the intent of this answer. Perhaps it means that we have seen that a voltage controlled current source can be can behave as a resistor if the controlling voltage happens to be across the current source. Okay. Now this is not my question really. I mean this is fine. This is true, but this is a resistor okay a voltage controlled current source with the controlling voltage across the uh, with a controlling voltage across the current source will be exactly the same as a resistor so my question was can we replace it by any other element and somebody said a voltage source okay now that is possible we'll see how now it turns out that a resistor can be replaced with either a voltage source or a current source of specific value okay now please understand that this will not work in general that is you have a circuit n with some particular value of sources inside okay so in under those conditions you will have some particular current and particular voltage across this resistor so in that condition you can replace this with a voltage source or a current source now if you change the sources inside n they will not be the same anymore Okay, they will be the same only for a particular value of the sources inside the network. Okay, now let's see how we can uh, prove this. The proof is uh, very simple and it's uh, it involves no algebra, just some simple logic. Okay. Is there a problem with the audio again? Okay, so it looks like uh, things are working. So let me copy over this circuit. Okay, now as I said, for particular values of some sources inside, this could have any number of resistors, voltage sources, current sources, even control sources and so on. And I'm showing one particular component here. We could do this with more than one component. Now, uh, for this, uh, set of values there is a current IR through the resistor and a voltage VR across the resistor okay now let me do this what I'll do is I will connect a current source of value IR in this direction and another current source of exactly the same value IR in the other direction okay so i have connected two equal and opposite current sources which means that i have not really connected anything okay because the current here will be exactly zero right all i did was to there is nothing connected here and that nothing i represented as a parallel combination of two equal current sources in opposite direction 
the value of each current source i took to be the current uh, flowing in the resistor okay now what i'll do is i will uh, i will just interchange the positions okay you see that this resistor this current source and that current source are in parallel i will put this current source on the left side and the resistor in the middle okay this is ir and across this we have vr and the current through the resistor will be exactly the same as before because nothing has really changed okay from my original circuit i have not made any changes i added a net of zero current here and then here i just simply uh, changed the way i drew the circuit okay but the interesting thing now is what will be the current in this part of the wire this uh, part of the circuit this wire let me show that in blue what will be the current in these blue wires okay i think all of you can immediately recognize that this current is zero okay so now if a wire is carrying zero current there is no point having that wire i may as well cut it off okay so this current will be zero so i can cut this off and nothing will change in the circuit okay because whether i have an open circuit that is a cut wire or a wire with uh, exactly zero current it is exactly the same thing okay so it won't disturb the circuit so i can cut off those things so what is the bottom line here my original uh, circuit was like this and after i did all the transformations i described to you and cut off this wire my circuit is like that and all through the steps of logic we saw that nothing really changes in this circuit so the voltages and currents in this circuit will be exactly the same as the voltages and currents in that circuit okay so what this means is that a resistor with a current ir flowing through it can be substituted by a current source of value ir and in the appropriate direction of course ir is flowing downwards here so this current source has to point downwards okay and this will be without changing any branch voltages or currents okay i hope this is convincing and this particular result is known as the substitution theorem okay so this it turns out is quite useful in many uh, uh applications i mean many when i say applications to solve other problems and maybe prove other circuit theorems okay so is this convincing any questions about this uh, chain of reasoning and the proof of substitution theorem okay so now uh, we can also quickly go through another possible substitution
what i'll do is uh, initially i mean uh, previously i added zero current and that zero current i represented as ir uh, two current sources of value ir in uh, opposite directions in parallel okay now what i'll do is in series with this particular wire i will break this wire okay and add two voltage sources of equal and opposite value and the value i choose to be vr and what is vr whatever voltage was across this resistor okay so now clearly this voltage will be the same as that voltage and essentially this combination two equal and opposite uh, voltage sources in series it's nothing but a short circuit okay so nothing has changed in the circuit now with respect to some reference voltage let me know let's say let me call this i formed a new node here let me call this n1 and n2 how will the voltage at n1 be related to voltage at n2 okay so maybe maybe i will say the value of vn1 minus vn2 that is the voltage at n1 minus the voltage at n2 what is this value going to be please try and answer this question my question is how is this voltage related to that voltage okay now i think it must be pretty convincing to you that i have not changed the circuit in any way all i did was to connect zero volts in series with the wire which is like not disturbing the wire at all but that zero volt is represented as two equal and opposite voltages uh, of value we are in series with each other okay so they will be at the same voltage again this is pretty clear if you go from here you have a voltage rise of vr and a voltage fall of vr so these two will be at exactly the same voltage now given that they are at the same voltage what i can do is connect them up like that okay so my circuit becomes i will uh, redraw it slightly differently i'll have uh, we are across this okay and you have something hanging from here which is we are and this resistor but you can see again that the current in this wire is definitely going to be uh, zero okay so that part can be removed from the circuit okay so what we have done is that the resistor which was across these two terminals has been substituted by a voltage vr where vr is the actual voltage across the resistor in the circuit so this is another variant of uh, the substitution theorem if you have a resistor with a voltage vr across it it can be substituted by an independent voltage source
ऑफ वाल्यूविया विदाउट चेंजिंग द सर्किट सॉल्यूशन, ओके This is fine. So this is another variant of uh, substitution theorem. So in summary, what it says is that If you have a circuit with a resistor R which has a voltage Vr across it and a current Ir through it, you can substitute that resistor by a current source of value Ir in the appropriate direction or a voltage source of value Vr in the appropriate polarity and the circuit solutions will be exactly the same. That is the branch voltages and currents here, here and here will be exactly the same okay and this is known as substitution theorem okay any questions about this any questions about the statement of uh, substitution theorem or the proof questions okay so let's move forward now one thing i want to point out is we took a resistor and then uh, substituted it first of all you can do this for uh, multiple resistors in a circuit it doesn't have to be only one and also it doesn't have to be a resistor it can be any element okay so instead of a resistor we could have any element okay which has a current ir through it and a voltage vr through it i will still call it ir and vr this may not be a this need not be a resistor this can be any two terminal element okay and Also, uh, when you say any two terminal element, that itself can be a complicated network with only two terminals exposed. Okay. So, this could be another network. The only condition is that only two terminals are uh, brought out like this and they are connected. And this entire thing. 
can be substituted by let's say the voltage across these two terminals is vr and the current flowing that way is ir and this entire thing can be substituted by a current source of value ir or a voltage source of value vr okay so i started with a resistor but you can uh, work out for yourself that the logic of the proof holds good even if it is a non linear element it can be any element in fact you can substitute a voltage source by a current source and vice versa and also uh, you can substitute a complicated circuit as long as it is only at two terminals okay so if you have a complicated network with only two terminals brought out you can substitute the entire network by this voltage source or current source okay i hope uh, that part is clear so there is a question asking about is there any limitation of this theorem i mean there really is no limitation the only thing is this theorem by itself uh, is somewhat limited in that uh, it works for specific values of voltages and currents i'll take an example after that it will become clear but like i said there is no other limit you can replace any element with a voltage source or a current source okay and when i say element it can be a simple thing like a resistor or uh, some non linear element like a diode but it can also be a complicated network okay so as long as only two terminals are brought out it doesn't matter what the network is inside it could have thousands of components but at those two terminals it can be replaced by either a current source of vo or voltage source but uh, this current source and voltage source are not arbitrary things they are the actual currents or voltages flowing in the original circuit okay so i hope that is clear and that also kind of summarizes the substitution theorem which uh, someone else asked for and as far as the application uh, of this is concerned in fact we'll see shortly we will prove other theorems using this theorem okay so and there is a question what is superposition theorem superposition we have discussed earlier okay we saw that if you we proved it with the nodal analysis but you can do it with any which uh, way you want the unknown vector in a nodal analysis in the nodal analysis method will come out to be g inverse times the source vector okay i call this i and v but we know that this can contain independent current sources and voltage sources okay so let's say this uh, independent source vector had two current sources i1 i2 and many zeros and then a voltage source also okay so this is the same as what i am writing now so this is the solution to the node voltages to the unknown uh, vector when all sources are acting together now this is the solution when i1 is active and other independent sources are set to zero similarly the second one is when i2 is active and other independent sources are set to zero and this finally is when 
only v1 is active and other independent sources are set to 0. So, this is superposition theorem. What it says is, if you have a number of independent sources in a circuit, the solution when all of them are active can be obtained as the solution uh, sum of solutions when each one is active and all the others are set to 0. Okay? So, that is you can activate the sources one by one and set all the other sources to 0. In this case, you first do the analysis with I1 only and I2 only and then V1 only and add up all the solutions and this works for any circuit that is linear. Okay. And a linear circuit means it has besides these independent sources, it has resistors and linear controlled sources. Okay. So, this is superposition. Okay. So, I, I hope that part is clear. Now, let us see, let us take a, a numerical example also to illustrate substitution theorem and to get a bit of practice with circuit analysis. I will take a very simple circuit. Let us say it has a single source 16 volts. Okay. So, now what I would like you to find is are these quantities. We, uh, please do not do it right now. In fact, uh, you have to do a little bit of working out. This circuit is not very difficult, but you still have to do that. So, please take it as an exercise and do it before next Tuesday and we will discuss this uh, circuit and how to solve it in the lecture. Okay. So, please calculate the voltage across this, I will call that V1 and the current through this resistor, I will call that uh, I2 and the current through this resistor, I will call it I3. Okay. Calculate V1, I2, I 3 and you can also calculate V 3 here across this. Okay. So, please take this up as an exercise and do the analysis before the next lecture. Okay. And to illustrate superposition, you can also try this. In addition to this, let me say I have a current source of value 5 milliamps. Okay. And then you can see. Uh, you can uh, solve for this one. Okay. Again, with this, calculate the same things. Okay. So, this, these are the exercises. As usual, uh, please go through it. Uh, please go through the circuit step by step and do it while understanding every step. Okay, the analysis of this is very simple, but you should be able to do it with confidence. Okay.
Somebody answered saying V1 will be 8 volts. That is not correct. Please uh, do the analysis in detail and then uh, solve for it. Okay. Now, uh, let us go to uh, something else. We will prove uh, another theorem based on a substitution theorem. And this is something that is very, very widely used. Okay. And in fact, it will use substitution theorem and superposition. So, I am glad you brought up the topic of superposition. Okay. Now, let us say we have a circuit N with independent sources and linear elements. Okay. When I say linear elements, it has resistors and controlled sources. Okay. And it can be any network right the connections inside we are not imposing any condition so it will have uh, uh, independent sources and uh, linear elements and linear elements means resistors and control sources the only condition i'll say is all the control sources have controlling quantities inside n okay it's not that any control source is controlled by a voltage that is outside somewhere else okay if it's a voltage controlled source that voltage will be inside N and similarly if it is a current control source that current will be inside N. Okay? So, that is the only condition I will impose. Okay? Now, uh, Let us say that a current I, current source I x is connected to it. It has two terminals, I will call them 1 1 prime that are coming out and I have this current source connected up like this 1 2 1 prime. Okay? Is this clear? The definition of uh, the circuit I have. Now, uh, the voltage here will be of some form, okay. Now, what I will do is, I will try to solve it by superposition. Superposition means that uh, when I have independent sources, I do not take all of them together, I can take one by one. And I do not have to do it one by one. If I have 10 of them, I do not have to do it 10 times. I can take 5 once and then the remaining 5 the other time and so on. Okay. Now, in this case, how I will split it is, I will do it with only this current source active and everything inside inactive. And then I will make this inactive, the outside current source Ix inactive and everything inside active. Okay, so that is also valid. So when I say superposition, you don't necessarily have to take it uh, one by one. So if I have, uh, let's say, inside the circuit, let's say I have five independent sources, two current sources, and uh, five, uh, uh, three voltage sources. I can uh, do superposition with I1 alone active and all others zero i2 and v1 v2 v3 and then add up the results okay instead i can also do it like this i can take i1 and i2 and v1 active okay and v2 and in that case i'll set v2 and v3 to 0 Next, I will take V2 and V3 active and set the rest to 0 and I add up the two results. Okay. So, this will give me exactly the same answer. Okay. So, just so you do not get uh, confused with this, let me uh, show it with an example. So, please try to solve this. So, let me take a very simple circuit again.
so this is the circuit okay now uh, first of all you can solve for this in a number of ways you can either use nodal analysis or mesh analysis and solve for it so please do that and let me know the voltage across this 6 kilo ohm resistor let me call that v1 please take this up as an exercise and use nodal analysis to find v1 okay so this is an extremely simple example there are only two nodes in fact i suggest that you take this as the reference node there are only two nodes in the circuit and this node has a voltage source connected to the reference node so this node voltage is already known so you only have to write one equation one nodal equation and solve for v1 so please do that please take it as an exercise and let me know the value of uh, this v1 in this circuit I hope the question is clear. All I'm asking for is this value of V1 and just do it by nodal analysis by writing the KCL equation at this particular node. Okay. I got one response. Anybody else? So I've got three responses, all different from each other. So hopefully others also have solved it. Okay. So maybe or you can just answer it in the poll.
Okay, I've opened the poll with all the responses that I've got. Please uh, just click on the poll and let me know your answer. Okay, so this is the result of the poll. I mean, somebody has voted for all uh, in all of these choices, but uh, the point is only one of these can be correct. So I will work it out in detail, and uh, you can figure out for yourself where you went wrong. This is very important because uh, obviously uh, three of these answers are incorrect. Now then you can figure out where you went wrong and then fix it for the next time. Okay. Now I said uh, write KCL at this node and uh, from there calculate V1. So the voltage of this node with respect to the reference node is nothing but V1. Okay. So the current uh, when we write KCL the current flowing out will be will together be equal to 0. So the current flowing in the 4 kilo ohm resistor that is flowing away from this node will be V1 minus 10 volts divided by 4 kilo ohms plus the current flowing in the 6 kilo ohm resistor is V1 by 6 kilo ohms plus the current flowing here it is a current source so we know the current the current flowing in this direction will be minus 1 amperes 1 minus 1 milliampere okay will be equal to 0 right so V1, if I group all of that uh, together, I will have V1 times 1 by 4 kilo ohm plus 1 by 6 kilo ohm equals 10 volt divided by 4 kilo ohm, okay, plus 1 milliampere, okay. This is what we will have. So, V1 will be uh, 10 volt by 4 kilo ohm, 1 by 1 over 4 kilo ohm plus 1 by 6 kilo ohms plus 1 milliampere divided by 1 by 4 kilo ohm plus 1 by 6 kilo ohms. Okay. So if I take this inside, I will get 10 volt 1 divided by 4 kilo ohm. This gives me 1 plus 4 by 6. This gives me 2 thirds. Okay. And this one here, uh, if I calculate this, I will get 6 kilo ohm plus 4 kilo ohms divided by 4 kilo ohm times 6 kilo ohm okay which is basically 10 by 24 kilo ohm in the denominator we have kilo ohm square in the numerator we have kilo ohm so we have 10 by 24 kilo ohm so we have 1 milliamp times 24 kilo ohms divided by 10 okay so you can see that this will be 6 volt that is 10 volts times 3 by 5 plus this will be 1 milliamp times 2.4 kilo ohms 2.4 volts which is equal to 8.4 volts okay 
So the correct answer is uh, 8.4 volts. So I hope it's uh, very clear how to do this. So if you do this nodal analysis, you will get the final answer in one shot. Now, uh, let me also do it by superposition just for to demonstrate it to you. Okay, so what I'll do is I will first set this 10 volts independent source to 0 and find V1 as a result of the 1 milliamp current source and then I will set this to 0, the 1 milliamp source to 0 and find this V1 as a result of the 10 volt source. And then I add up the values of V1 from this circuit and that circuit and that will give me the same as same answer as before or it should if superposition is valid. Now this is a linear circuit we have independent sources and except the independent sources we have just resistors which are linear. So we will uh, we can apply superposition okay. Now uh, when I set 10 volt source to 0 what does it mean what should I replace the 10 volt source by? When I say set to 0, what does it mean? What should I replace it by? Okay, so many of you answered that it is replaced by a short circuit. So when I this is a voltage source. When I make the voltage source a zero volt source, it is a short circuit. Okay. Okay. So here I have to replace it with a short circuit. Now similarly, when I set the current source to zero, what should I replace by? What should I? What should I replace it by? So clearly I have to replace it with a zero current source and a zero current means a no current which is an open circuit. Okay. So there should be no confusion in this. Uh, sometimes you hear terms like I remove the sources. Just to try not to use that because it will only lead to confusion. So you just make that source value equal to zero. So if it's a voltage source, it becomes a short circuit. If it's a current source, it becomes an open circuit. Okay. So now uh, in the first case, what is the value of V1? If you observe the six kilo ohm and four kilo ohm are in parallel. Okay. It's drawn in a strange way, but really this voltage, uh, sorry, this terminal is common to the two resistors and this also. Okay. So both the resistors are connected between this node and that node. So that means they are in parallel. Okay. So what I have really is a 1 milliamp current source going into this 4 kilo ohm and 6 kilo ohm in parallel and we know what happens when you connect resistors in parallel. It is equivalent to a single resistor of value 1 by the reciprocal of the resistors. In fact, when you have only two resistors in parallel, you can uh, use the formula R1, R2 by R1 plus R2. So you will get 4 kilo ohm times 6 kilo ohms divided by 4 kilo ohm plus 6 kilo ohm. And this is 24 kilo ohms divided by 10 which is 2.4 
kilohms. Okay, and if one milliamp current flows through 2.4 kilohms, so this milliamp and kilohm uh, multiplied will give you volts. So you will get 2.4 volts. And by the way, when you use superposition, you make sure that whatever quantity you have to solve for, you have uh, put that in a consistent direction everywhere. Okay, V1 is the voltage across 6 kilo ohm resistor with the upper terminal positive. It's the same here. And in this case, V1 will be here across uh, 6 kilo ohm, and that is equal to 1 milliamp times 2.4 kilo ohm, which is 2.4 volts okay and similarly if i have this particular case okay you can calculate the total current what is the current flowing here what is the current flowing in this loop you have two resistors in series four kilo ohms and six kilo ohms so what is the current flowing here So some of you have answered just one uh, always these are uh, quantities with dimensions so please always give the units along with the number and some of you have answered one ampere so please uh, be careful about what you're doing and give me the correct answer The series combination of 4 and 6 kilo ohms is a single resistor of 4 kilo ohms plus 6 kilo ohms which is 10 kilo ohms. So we have 10 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms which gives you 1 milliampere. It's not 1 ampere and don't uh, try not to give answers like 1 because that's only going to get confusing. So this is 1 milliampere and as 1 milliampere flows through both of these. So the voltage V1 will be 1 milliamp times 6 kilo ohm which is equal to 6 volts. Okay, so it's uh, very simple and alternatively you can recognize that this is a voltage divider and use the voltage divider formula. The voltage across the 6 kilo ohm resistor is nothing but 6 kilo ohm divided by 6 kilo ohm plus 4 kilo ohm times the applied voltage source which is 10 volts which gives you 6 volts. Either way you get the voltage across uh, the 6 kilo ohm resistor to be 6 volts. Okay. So here we have 2.4 volts and here we have 6 volts, okay. So the actual total voltage will be the sum of these two which is nothing but 8.4 volts and it's exactly the same as what we have here 8.4 volts, okay. In fact the way I have uh, written out the expressions this is the contribution from the uh, voltage source and this is the contribution from the current source and they get added together. Now in general if you have uh, uh, multiple inputs that is multiple independent uh, sources okay you have uh, you have the uh, any voltage or any current in the circuit will be a linear combination of all the sources okay for instance let me make these variables just for uh, illustration. Let me call this Vs and let me call this Is. If I write Kirchhoff's uh, current law uh, at this node, this part will be exactly the same. Okay, let me, uh, so instead of 10 volts, I will have Vs here and instead of minus 1 uh, milliampere, I will have minus Yes. Okay. So if I take it to uh, that other equation, I will end up getting instead of uh, 10 volts, I will have uh, Vs and instead of this 1 milliamp, I will have Is. Okay. So here I will have uh, Vs and there I will have Is. The reason I did that is to just show that this V1 will be some linear combination of Vs and Is. It will be some number times Vs plus some other number times 
Ah, yes. Okay. And if you have many, many sources, it will always be like this. It will be in a linear combination form. And it's not only V1. You take the voltage or current in any uh, part of the circuit. It will be a linear combination of all the independent sources applied to the circuit. Okay. So in this particular case, we will get V1 to be 0.6 times Vs plus 2.4 kilo ohms times Is. Okay. So if you substitute Vs equal to 10 volt and Is equal to uh, 1 milliamp, you will get the total to be 8.4 volts. Okay. So hopefully this is clear both uh, how to solve uh, circuits like this. This is a very simple circuit and also the general idea of superposition. Okay. So we solved the circuit uh, with all the sources in one shot and then we did it with one source by one source setting all the other sources to zero and we got the same answer as we should have got as we expected from a linear uh, circuit. And we also showed the here that any voltage or current will appear as a linear combination of all the independent sources. Okay. So that's what uh, superposition is. So that's how we solve for it. Okay. So now, uh, in this case, we had only two sources. If we had more than two, if we had three sources, we could have taken uh, two sources at a time and another source, or we could have taken one source at a time, three times and so on. Okay. So now let's get back to what we were trying to do. We have a network N with uh, many independent sources and uh, linear elements. Linear elements means resistors and linear control sources. And the only condition is that all the controlling quantities are inside this network N. Okay. And there are two terminals that are coming out that are visible to the outside world, one and one prime. And I connect a current source IX from one to one prime. Okay. So to find this voltage across 1 1 prime, uh, let me call this Vx. What I can do is many things. I can uh, solve the entire circuit, but here I am trying to do a particular, uh, uh, I am trying to prove a particular circuit theorem. So I will do it in this way. I will take Ix alone, okay, and find Vx. That is when I say Ix alone, all the independent sources inside are set to 0. And I will set Ix to 0 and use only the independent sources inside. I activate them and find this Vx. And then I can add up the two results and find the total value. Okay. So let me just uh, do that. Uh, let me uh, draw the picture corresponding to that. And we can end this lecture and continue uh, from here in the next lecture. So first what I will do is, so inside the independent sources will be active and I will set Ix to 0. Okay. So when I set Ix to 0, what happens? This is an open circuit. Okay. And in the next case, this Ix will be active. And this independent sources, any number of independent sources inside will all be set to 0. Okay. And this is known as nulling the circuit. So I have nulled the network in. That means any independent sources I have set to 0. But uh, Ix is active. Okay. So I will get, uh, let us say I call this uh, Vx1 when uh, Ix is inactive and is Vx2 when I, Ix is active and then I add up the two values of Vx to get the final value. Okay. So this will continue in the next lecture. In fact, you can take this also as an exercise and find the general form of the solution that you get for Vx1 and in particular for Vx2. Okay. What will be the form of Vx2? What will it be? What will be its dependence on Ix? Okay. And we'll take it from there in the next lecture. If there are any questions regarding whatever we discussed today or anything else, please let me know. I'll uh, clear those and end the lecture.
So there are uh, several questions. One is uh, asking, is uh, pushing of voltage sources through a node a new theorem? I'm not sure what it is, uh, what is meant by this. I mean, certainly I didn't invent this. It's a, it's a well-known result, okay, and a relatively obvious result that is sometimes useful. And the next thing is about current division. Now, current division is the counterpart of voltage division. I will show it with two resistors, R1 and R2. Clearly, if you have two parallel resistors, R1 and R2, the voltage across them will be the same. Let me call it Vx. And the current through this will be Vx by R1. Here, it will be Vx by R2. And by applying KCL at this node, we know that Vx by R1 plus Vx by R2 equals let me call this is okay so vx will be is divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 which is is times r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 i could have written down this uh, directly by noticing that r1 and r2 are in parallel so is times r1 parallel r2 is the voltage vx now, if I look at any particular current, let's say current flowing through R1, that will be equal to Vx divided by R1. Okay, so this current IR1 is Vx divided by R1, which is equal to Is and R1 cancels here, R2 by R1 plus R2. And this is analogous to the voltage divider formula. If I have Vs, the voltage across this is Vs R2 by R1 plus R2, okay. Now, uh, it's some ratio of resistors in both cases. In case of current division, the current through R1 will have R2 in the numerator. And in case of uh, voltage uh, divider, uh, voltage division, the voltage across R2 will have R2 in the numerator. That's all. Okay. Now the next question is, uh, is actually the question is not clear. Uh, I guess the question is what to do with uh, dependent sources when you apply superposition. You don't do anything. You certainly do not set dependent sources to zero. Dependent sources will have whatever dependence they have. Okay. For instance, a voltage controlled uh, voltage source will be dependent on some voltage Vx. Okay. And let's say it is some k times Vx. You don't change anything here. You simply do the analysis uh, as usual. Okay. So if this is Vx, that is k times Vx. Okay. And someone asked for the slide showing uh, superposition. So it's here. All that is saying is the source vector, which has many elements, can be thought of as sum of uh, one element at a time, i1 here, i2 here, and v1 there. And there could have been more things. I have not shown it. And you see that uh, this basically comes from uh, linearity, right? So if you have these vectors, you can show it as sum of this one and that one and that one. And g inverse times this is g inverse times that plus g inverse times that plus g inverse times that. And you can interpret each of them as solution when only one of the sources is active. Okay. So I hope that clears up all of those things. Then uh, if you have any other questions, please do feel free to raise them in the forum or in the next lecture. Okay. Thanks for attending. I'll see you on Tuesday.